Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. One of the best parts of doing these videos is when I have the folks that watch them reach out to me with questions. Uh, you know, I do these because I want everybody to have a great experience with the software and the equipment that's out there and the policies and all the rest of the stuff that we live with with amateur radio day in, day out. So when I get a question, I try to answer it. I got a couple questions from a viewer having to do with deployment of Logbook for Old Men 2. And you know, they were things that I probably should have covered that I didn't. So this is an add-on video to the Logbook for Old Men 2 series. And we're going to cover importing and massaging your old log data from your old logging software to work properly with all the auto upload and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so without further ado, oh, you know, I always ask this, so you ought to be used to it by now. If you would and you haven't yet, click on the subscribe button and join my, uh, my group of followers. Uh, when new videos come out, you'll get them. Uh, you'll get notified. You'll be able to watch them real quick. Uh, anyway, with that, let's get on with the show. Whoa, 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 it's me from the future remembering that you need to make sure you get a full backup of your log before you start doing any of the stuff that we're doing today. One little slip and you might delete it. So make sure when you get the log into the system, make sure that you have a full copy of it. Take that log, do an output of the A diff before you start changing fields around, okay? Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG. And I've been uh, receiving some emails from another operator by the name of uh, Jack that's been having some trouble with the logbook of the world imports from Log for Old Men 2. And he found out something really interesting. It looks like all of his... Uh, settings for his location are wrong inside the log. And I think I know how that happened. Um, and I think I know what we need to do to fix it. But what we're going to do right now, we're going to start with the concept of where I think things went wrong and why uh, I probably wasn't adamant enough in my setup video for Logbook for Old Men that uh, this error didn't happen. So... Let me go ahead and uh, sneak down to the corner here, and I'm going to launch a brand new, fresh install of Logbook for All Men. Now, I'm going to jump through even a more basic configuration than I do in the other one. We're just going to get enough that we can get on, uh, import our logs in it, okay? Um, so, should pop up now. With the yep information request, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pop my call sign in. I need to change my uh, I A R U region to region two, okay, for other stuff to work out here. And I want to select my station country, okay. This populates some stuff automatically. Unfortunately, it populates some stuff automatically incorrectly. So. Right here it says ITU Area 6, CQ Area 5. For me, in California, I am in ITU Area 6, but I'm in CQ Zone 5. Now I'm going to make this even worse. I'm going to say I'm in ITQ Area 7 because I guessed wrong. That would be bad too. But let's just, we'll go ahead and take the defaults, okay? I need to put something in here. We'll pop in our information real quick. And uh, my county's Ventura. Okay. 
okay, and my state is California. Notice this hasn't changed, right? I'm even going to put in my six-digit grid, grid square here. And let's get my call sign in here and everything else. All right. Now, notice this is still wrong. I'm not in CQ area 5, okay? So, but we're going to continue just like, you know, we think it's right, we haven't checked, okay? Or maybe we don't care, but at this point, let's go ahead, let's set up a quick database. I'm going to select new. And again, this is all part of the base configuration if you've watched my original video. Um, let's see, I want to create it. I'm going to create a new directory. This is just for tests, but I just can't help being complete here. Uh, log 4OM dash 2. I'll go in here and let's name the file. Oh, I don't know. How about working? Because we're taking what we're getting because we're working for a living. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and apply. It's going to come up ask me questions about my network, whether it's allowed. I always say yes, because we use a lot of network connections on the local host back and forth inside the system. Uh, all right. So now we've closed everything out. I'm even going to go as far as to close the program. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and reopen the program here. And I'm going to take a look right now at the uh, at the configuration one more time because I want to look and make sure that it hasn't changed. So I'm going to go to Settings and Program Configuration. I want to look at my station info. You know what? That CQ zone is still wrong. Now, what does that really mean? Well, all right. Let me tell you what it means. I'm going to import some data that comes out of a very minimal log program, but we're going to pretend this is my entire log. I'm going to take what's called the basic export that I, or excuse me, this export right here. It actually came out of um, N1MM, okay? Um, I'm going to select File. I'm going to select Import. I'm going to say load, I need to go to my desktop, and I need to grab that and say OK, and I'm going to import. Now it's going to go, it's going to work a bunch of stuff out, it's going to probably add some additional stuff, there we go. All right, let's take a look at our log. Let's see what we got. Well, there they are. Look at that. Let me get uh, rid of that on the side here. And uh, I have all their information. All right. Notice here I've got uh, my QRZ stuff here is requested. I'm going to need to fix all that, I think. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do now. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go to Utilities, and I want to go to the QSO Manager. All right. And I want to look at actually all the data that it's put in here. And I'm going to scroll across. This is every log entry. My CQ zone and my ITU zone is set to zero. Okay, that's not accurate. I need to fix that. So there are lots of things I need to fix, and everything is set to requested here, which is not what we want to do for our programming. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. 
I need to do two things now. Actually, three. So let's take it just one step farther here. I want to go into my program configuration and I want to go into my external services. And if I was going to do Logbook of the World, I would put all my info in here. Okay. And for me, I would set this to no. All right. That means that if the status of sent is no, then I'm not going to, then I'm going to upload it to Logbook of the World. Okay. Now, the reason that I do that is it allows me a little bit more flexibility. Okay. Also, of course, under here, I've got to change my confirmations. So we're going to select Logbook of the World, and I've gone over this a couple times with some folks. Um, but I'm going to change this in all views. And I'm going to change from, I'm going to change these both to no. And I'm going to save it. Now, if I was doing EQSL, I would do the same thing. And I would save it. What this is doing is it's prepping me. Okay. So when I do make new log entries, it all works. So let's see a couple different problems that we probably have right now uh, with my friend. So if I am to save a log entry right now, let's use AB6ET. All right. Uh, need to select a band because I don't have any lookup set up. I'll just select 80 meters and I'll select lower side band. And I'm going to go ahead and just save this. Just like that. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting. Now, if I go in and I go to utilities and I go to the QSO manager, and let's uh, let's make this a little little uh, bigger here. And I sweep across here. Look what I have here. My ITU zone and my CQ zone now are well because I'm in six. It's correct, but. I'm not in five, I'm in three. This is incorrect, and it's going to go to upload that information, not just assume it. So I need to do a little fix in here. Okay? Also, this new entry right here is going to be correct. No, no, no. See all that? Right? That's correct, but these other entries that I previously imported in aren't. So, the easiest way for me to resolve this problem, okay, easiest way, since I'm in this portion of the program already, I am going to turn around and I am going to select everything that's in here and I'm going to go to single field update. I'm going to go to this pull down and I'm going to take a look at my, where is it? My ITU zone. And for my friend that's been emailing with me back and forth on this, his ITU zone, I looked it up. It's eight. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm changing this, right? And guess what? When I click update, it is going to change every single QSO for my ITU zone to 8. Okay? Let's take a look at that. Go back to my ITU zone. And remember, there's two, right? You've got the one that you talk to, but you also have your ITU zone, which I'm looking for right here. Come on, where is it? There we go. There, my ITU, right, right there. Now they're all eight. Now, what else do I have to change? Well, I want to change my CQ zone, right? So my buddy's CQ zone, I've got to take a look here. My buddy's CQ zone is 
four. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, select them all. I can do it right here with this select, deselect. And I'm going to go to single field update. Now I want my CQ zone. The important thing to remember is it's my CQ zone, not the one for every QSO. And I'm going to set this to four. Now I'm going to update it again. Look at that. That was quick, huh? Let's go back to our QSOs. And there we go. That's all fixed. Okay? So we know those records are good now. All right, let's go ahead and close that up. Now, we've got to fix that problem, though, that gave us the wrong setting to begin with, right? So I'm going to go back into my program configuration. I'm going to go back to my configuration under station information, and I'm going to change this. I'll change it to my buddies, right? So it's eight and four, right? That's it. I just click on save. You know what? It doesn't care about this either. It doesn't care. Uh, it's not going to match or change it based on my square so or my address or my state even, right? It's not going to do it. So important stuff here to get right if we're doing Logbook of the World. Now, I've saved that now. Let's do an entry. All right. And I am going to uh, basically, let's call this uh, six meters and uh, upper sideband. I'm just going to save it. All right. Now, you see here, I've got this other one right there. Okay. And what I need to do is I need to take a look again under my utilities, under my QSO manager, so I can see all the fields here, and I'm going to scroll over, and there we go. It is properly set now to 4 and 8, right? Because it's in my main configuration that way. All right. Now, what if you screwed up some of those log entries, and you put them in and automatically put the wrong CQ zone and the wrong IT, uh, uh, the wrong zones? What do you do? Okay. Well... What you're going to do is you're going to fix them just like I did. Then you're going to go into your utilities and you're going to go into your QSL manager. And this is kind of interesting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to EQSL. And I'm going to hit search. And all of them, see, all of them are going to show up with what was basically the sent received EQSL information, right? Uh, it's wrong. So if I'm using that, I want these both set to no. So I can select them all, and I'm going to select Enable Update. And I'm going to change the sent and received both to no, like this. And then I'll click that. Okay. Now they're all set to no. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to do the same thing. I want to go to Logbook of the World, right? And I'm going to hit search, and I'm going to fix all those the same way. I'm going to set them both to no. We're going to say okay. Oop, but I have to select them. If I don't select them, it won't do anything. See how that works? Now they're all set to no. Now you think that'd be a dangerous thing, right? Um, well, in under certain circumstances, it actually is. But we're going to utilize this information now to update all of our QSLs to Logbook of the World. We're going to send everything over again. I know, I know. For me, it's about uh, you know five thousand records. So, but. It's not a bad idea to do this every once in a while, okay? And the way that we would actually do that is we would go to File and we would export our ADIF. And I'll just click here on ADIF and I'll say, you know what? We're going to say export everything. 
and there we go. And there's export everything. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we are going to put it into Logbook of the World. Now, interestingly enough, once we do that, okay, then we will go back in and we will take our settings and we will go to our QSL manager and we're going to go to Logbook of the World and we're going to hit search. We're going to enable update. We're going to select all and we're going to send set our sent to yes. We're not going to change anything on receive. So now this matches everything that we have resent over to logbook of the world. Okay. Now, don't be concerned when you upload all these, you're going to get a lot of dupe errors and everything else, but we don't care about that. Okay. We don't. We don't. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then when we're all done, then we're going to tell it to receive and to receive everything. So what we'd actually do then is go to download and we'd tell it to receive everything. Right. And how do we do that? Well, we just set the date as far back as uh, we want here. Well, we'll go back to, I don't know, when that first QSO was in January. Um, we'll accept that, and then we'll go all the way to today, right? And then we'll download. Going to take a while, but it'll compare and set all the ones that have been activated and confirmed to yes on received uh, and that's all you need to do okay so remember the important part here to begin with though is if you're setting this up initially make sure you have those zones correct okay make sure you get them set I'm going to show you where that is one more time right under settings here under program configuration under your station information, make sure you have this ITU and CQ uh, zones properly set before you enter a QSO, okay? Make sure also that you go in under here, under references, excuse me, not references, I'm sorry, under, where is it? Uh, confirmations. And make sure that all of these items are properly set. Make sure that if you're doing Logbook of the World, both these are set to no and you click OK. Make sure you make that uh, selection in your main statistics. Make sure you select them all. Okay. And of course, you can always go and change them. All right. But this is, this is the easy way to do it. Okay, then of course, no, no, and save it. And I just do it for all of them. Because it's not requested until I upload it or download it, all right? And as far as I'm concerned, it's either been sent or not been sent, okay? Um, we verify for EQSL, uh, Logbook of the World I verify. Let's go down, QRZ, and we need to fix that. see MQTH I don't upload to all of these just to just to be fair there are some that I do upload to regularly uh, it's nice to have a backup of my logs and stuff uh, up on the uh, up on the system there we go and I'm done remember to hit save apply all right now I'm going to show you I'm going to actually do an export out of my system and you know what it's time for me to go ahead and export all my stuff and send it all up to Logbook of the World again. And I'll show you how to do that next. Uh, so through the magic of video, we're going to pause. Wow, that's cool. So through the magic of electronics, we figured out 
how to get to a real life system with real life data in it. All right. So I am going to export all of my QSLs. Uh, so I'm going to select export, select a diff, and let's see. Let's just call it. Uh, what have I got here? We'll do. There we go. All QSOs for today for my file name. And I'll say save. And it's going to export them all. Now, once I'm done exporting, I can close this and I can go into my logbook of the world, uh, TQSL, I think is what it's called. Um, but I want to show one other thing. On the QSL manager, if I select my logbook of the world and I do a search, okay, and I look at confirmations and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I see all the confirmations and whether it was sent or not and all of that. One of the things that I want to make sure you understand is if I try to upload all the QSOs, okay, that I have in there, TQSL is going to say, you've already uploaded these, you don't need to do it again. That's its automatic default response. So I can't upload stuff I've already uploaded through TQSL. What I need to do is I need to do this directly from TQSL. So we're going to go over here and I'm going to locate my TQSL program. It's here. There it is. All right. We'll launch that. I'm going to sign a log and upload it automatically to Logbook of the World. And that was all QSOs and today's date. I'm going to open it. And it says, this file will be saved and sent. And it shows uh, my DXCC home country and all that and my station QTH that I'm using. Is that correct? I'm going to say yes, and I'm not going to put a date range in here. I'm just going to say yes. And station, it says uh, station location doesn't match QSO details. Uh, I'm just going to ignore that. Ah, see, already uploaded. It's not taking them. Now, the log contains 3,000 uh, files that appear to already be up on QSO. I'm going to say re-upload. The only reason to re-sign already uploaded QSOs is if a previous upload was processed either because it was, eh, you know what, I'm going to say yes. Now, why am I doing this? Okay, I'm doing it because I want to make sure that my information is properly synchronized up there. So it's uploading the data. I'm done. Now I got to let this process for a while. Once it's done processing, we'll download the approvals. So we'll come back and we'll show you how to do that. Well, okay, my uh, processing and my upload are all done. That was fast. Well, really it wasn't. But through the magic of, uh, you know, video recording, it works. Now, let's go ahead and go to our utilities, to our QSL manager. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select Logbook of the World. I'm going to search. It's going to provide me all of my QSOs. Now I want to make sure that they're properly updated in here. So I am going to download confirmations. I'm going to select a date range. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to, let's go to 2000, here I'll go to 2015. And I'll take this, and I'll go, oh, click 
here. There we go. And I will go to today. And I'm set to go. So I'm now going to request that. Here we go. And it says it may take some time. And I believe them. But let's see how long it takes. Wow, that took a while. Uh, but it's done. And uh, it has brought in, it found some new QSOs that weren't recorded, all that good stuff. It's made all the appliable changes and changed statistics around for me. And I am now completely in sync with Logbook of the World. All right, and from here on out, now that I've fixed my settings for the initial settings, I should be set to rock and roll. Anyway, gosh, you know, with all that, I have to tell you, uh, this has been pretty interesting, and I enjoyed doing it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I hope this helps you out if you're having issues with getting Logbook of the World's upload synchronization and all that working. If it helps you, give me a comment, will you? Till then. Well, you know, a lot of very complicated data in there. I covered a lot of ground. Um, I'm hoping that that helps you if you're having problems right now with your logbook of the world synchronization and how it all kind of works in the background. Uh, the one final note I'll explain is, you know, that yes, uh, no, and requested. That's designed to help you be able to make the decisions and also allow your award system to take effect inside of log for all men. Um, all you got to do is get the settings right, and you should be fine. And again, remember, it's not a bad thing to load your entire log maybe once a year up to Logbook of the World, uh, just to make sure that it's synchronized. You may have had an issue, especially when you're doing auto uploads and stuff like that, like we're talking about with Log, log for Old Men. Anyway, this is Stu, AG6AG, and if you enjoy my videos, click subscribe questions, uh, you know, comments, make them down in the comments down below. You're always welcome to uh, send me an email with a question. Uh, if you put the comments down below, I try to answer them so it helps everybody in the comments, okay? So keep that in mind. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and I really want to hear you on the air.